It's definitely a fight that when it comes to April, we think we're there. We'll get everything sold, we'll get everything planted out. Because we've noticed that increase in daylight. We can feel that our temperatures improved just a bit. But the thing about Britain is that that weather is always there to give us a little reminder of who's in charge. We're getting really nice sunny days. But for the last couple of days, we've had quite a lot of rain and we've had bad winds as well. And we've got more to come over the next couple of days. Up to 46 mile an hour winds. But on top of that, at some point next week, that temperature's gonna drop down to one degree again. So although we think we're full on now, we're definitely not. You can't guarantee putting anything outside or even in ground in your greenhouse in the UK knowing it's going to be 100% alright until at least mid-May. Because for most areas, the second week of May is going to be a last frost date. So only then is it full steam ahead. So just bear in mind that if you're considering putting a tender type of crops in ground in your greenhouses or even outside, meaning things like French beans, because they're definitely not cold hardy, then just hold off for a few more weeks. And if you've already got things like French beans and runner beans, as someone commented on channels says they have, and they've grown quite tall already, best thing to do to deal with that is to pot them on. Don't take that chance of putting them outside because they've gotten quite big. It'll only take you a minute or two to pop it into a bigger container and extend that indoor growing by a couple of extra weeks. Because when we go from temperatures this coming week down to one degree if you go forward on the weather you'll find out that the following weekend is going to be 20 degrees which is a massive shift in temperature which is something else that doesn't suit plants at all it can trigger certain plants into thinking they've entered the second year of growing not the first because it's gone quite warm it's gone really cold and then it's gone really warm again and for a lot of plants, that's what causes them to bolt or go to seed. They start sending up flowers to drop seeds, thinking it's the second year of growing. When all it actually amounts to is ridiculous English weather, which shifts from one direction to the next, even over just a few days. So if you keep plants in your greenhouse and offer them that bit of protection when you need them, you can then to some degree maintain a temperature and just wait until it's 100% time to put your plants outside because you don't want to be losing them just for the sake of a couple of weeks. I've got lots of peppers growing indoors and every single day I bring them out and you can see the nice looking little plants now. And we've got about three trays of these. Every day when I'm in here, I bring them outside just for a couple of hours because that's hardening those plants off. So when it does come time to put them outside permanently, whether it be in containers or in ground, they're perfectly adapted. Because if they're not, they're gonna suffer and it's gonna knock those plants back, if not kill them. So it's not just a case of growing your plants and then putting them straight outside and hoping for the best. It's a case of just keeping your eye on that weather, making sure you've passed that last frost date because then you know you're safe with pretty much anything. So if your plants are getting a little bit too big for the containers, don't be tempted to take that risk. Pot them on into bigger containers, because you're going to lose two months worth of growing if it does drop really harsh in your area and you lose those plants. So that's why we're doing this. We bring the peppers out, they get natural sunlight, they're getting climatised to the difference between indoor and out. And in a few weeks time, these will get potted on and put in the final place and they'll be staying outside and they'll be perfectly all right at that stage. Also, because we're having such bad winds again, I did pop out and get some tie wraps and a pretty good deal as well. Because we put that pea support up and we did one of those last year. If you've seen that previous video, at some point during the year, when we passed as last frost date, and everything appeared to be fine, we got some really bad storms come. 
And of course, by then, the peas had reached the tops of these canes. And there were peas either side as well. So that's quite a lot of weight. And it's basically a wall for that wind to hit, which it did. And we had to prop it up one side, then prop it up the other side. It nearly blew the entire thing over. And it was only all together we doubled up pieces of string. So this year, we've made sure we do what we normally do, and we're going to do it with tie wraps and make it a lot stronger than it were last time. But that's another thing that you have to keep your eye on. It's not just your frost dates, it's the wind as well, depending on which area at UK you live in, because we do get some pretty bad ones. Sometimes up to 65 mile an hour winds. And I've also got some strawberry netting as well. Pretty cheap to buy. And what we'll do is we'll tie wrap this all the way across that pea frame and then pull it tight right down to the bottom. And then as these peas grow, they put out little tendrils that will wrap around this netting and then they'll grow again and then put out another tendril and so on until they get right to the top. So they're getting a consistent grip all the way up that plant. So since the plant's putting that much effort in to stay upright, if you do build these pea structures, make sure that they're as stable as possible. Because if not, then winds will soon sort them out. We put that shallot in a little two litre pot to see how it get on. And you can see, it's doing really well. It's putting up all these multiple little onion tops. And as this grows and gets bigger, that one bulb will then split off into five or six small shallots. And we just pop that one in there to see how it get on. The rest are outside in raised bed. Which is perfectly fine because onions are very cold hardy. They can stand frosts. So that's why at the moment the only thing we've got outside are those onions and a few peas. Which we're probably going to have to put some fleece over if that temperature drops any lower than it says it's going to next week. But it is only for one day. Also all those potatoes are now getting put back in greenhouse because of those winds for one thing but also because some of these potato plants are now about this big sticking out top of them compost bags it's took a long time for that little seed potato to put a shoot up all the way through that compost and become a plant on top and if frost hits the tops of those potatoes then the tops of those potato plants are going to turn black and they're going to die and then your seed potato underneath is going to have to send up a new shoot all over again so you've lost all that time. So if you've got any potatoes as well that have got foliage coming out of that compost, make sure you either bury them with more compost or you cover them up with bubble wrap. Because that's going to save you a lot of time, especially if they get hit by a frost. And you're going to have to keep doing that between now and second week of May until you know you're going to be safe. And I've actually been and got a few more seed potatoes as well. We've done quite a few containers already, but these already had chits growing on them because they've been in shop for quite a while. So we thought we'll grab those because that's saving us half a job. And we've got some Picasso and Amor, if that's how you pronounce that. So we've got some more containers to set up with seed potatoes. But that's good because we've already got containers and bags with potatoes that's got plants already growing out at top. Then we can do some fresh ones now and then we've got staggered harvests. So they won't be ready for harvest when these are. So we can have an harvest maybe a month or so later. Which works perfect for me. Especially when it comes to second earlies because they don't store as well as main crops. And first earlies don't store you basically have to harvest those potatoes and then eat them within a few days. Whereas with your main crop plants, once they come to full size plants and they've flowered and they're starting to die back, all you need to do with those is chop the tops of all those plants off and then leave them for about a week. Because basically what that's going to do is make the skin on these potatoes start to harden. And that's why they'll store for months in a cold place. But you can't really do that with your first and second earlies. So if you have planted those, when it does come to harvest time, just harvest one container at a time. Don't empty the lot 
as tempting as it is to do that, we all want to see what's in these pots and containers at end of year. But just stagger those harvests again. Only take as many as you need for a week or two because they'll stay in those containers perfectly fine for quite a few weeks. Even after the plant tops have already died back, the potatoes underneath will still be all right. So once again, it's kind of all about the weather because we never know what's gonna happen in England. As I've said, one degree in a few days time and a few days after that, it's gonna be full sun and I think it's a Sunday and it's gonna be 20 degrees is a massive shift in temperature so as tempted as I am to start putting more things outside I've got to hang back a bit we have put some more onions in a little raised bed outside and we actually put them quite close together it's only six foot by three foot but onions don't need a lot of space and they'll quite happily grow shoulder to shoulder if they have to that's why sometimes we multi sow onions because we know they'll just push each other apart as they grow. Just in the same way multi sown beetroot does. But we'll have a quick look at this new bed we've set up. And then just a quick check on that container garden. Because we have had to take quite a few things out of there because of this weather. We have left a few bits and bobs in. So I'm just going to check see how they're getting on. Because if I have to move them, I will. Let's go and check out these onion sets we've put in. So this is that other oop tunnel that we've done and you can see that we've put quite a lot of onion sets in there, loads and loads and they're only spaced about three inches apart. We're going to get a lot of onions out of that and then next to it we've got those shallots and you can see they're all starting to sprout on top now. Next to them we've got some more onions and they're the ones that we pre-grew indoors and then we've got a few more that's just starting and then we've got that row of cabbages and broccoli and we've got enough room down at each side of this to put some more onion sets in and I think I've got a few left or I might change my mind and do some beetroot instead because beetroot or carrots will grow quite happily alongside brassicas well you can see there's not much left in here at the moment we're just being careful because of those winds that onion bath still looks alright though no problems at all in there they're just getting taller every day and this carrot container looks all right too can't see any carrot tops in there at the moment but it is quite early for those but at least they're not discolored or damaged onion pot doing perfectly well still and again we're ready to take an harvest from that salad container looks all right still again more green onions, a few beetroots and a row of carrots but they're all in their own as well and so are these parsnips no sign of any parsnip tops either yet and there's cabbages look alright so far in containers I don't see any problems with those at the moment And cauliflowers, this one's been blown a little bit to one side, so, but it looks alright, it doesn't seem to be growing that much on top this one, but it did get quite tall, so we'll have to see how that goes. These containers look alright too, that's that multi sown salad planter that we did quite recent, and they're just starting to come through, even though they're outside. The germinating perfectly fine and then we've got this one we've put some peas in this they seem to be concentrating more on growing 
onto each other than rather up that trellis so we'll probably tie those up with a little bit of string and the spinach is looking all right too all quite cold hardy plants and we've got a bit more growth on this potato pot as well so if it drops cold we'll have to remember to take that one indoors like we have done this one because I'd hate to lose these plants at that stage so majority of things outside are looking all right but we've seen there's a couple of bits and bobs out there like those potatoes the tops have grown that much out of compost already so things like that definitely need to come back in this greenhouse and we'll just keep bringing these peppers out for the next week or so because then we'll know they're at least fully hardened off meanwhile we'll tie up that pea frame up get that net attached and get some more peas grown so we can fill the entire bottom with peas over the next few months and in between now and then we're still going to be sowing some more seeds so we can keep lots of backup plants as well as plenty of plants to be putting out through May. So once again if it did cross your mind that maybe it's time to start putting things outside wait a few more weeks especially if you're thinking about putting out tender crops. So I'm going to sort some seeds out now and I'll be back tomorrow with another update and if you want to see what that is please hit that subscribe button and press that notifications bell and we'll see you then take care keep the eye on that weather forecast <laughs>